them inscribed on stones and uh, gravestones. In the 17th century, there was a big interest in them to the point where they are now, you can, you can be trained in the interpretation of certain glyphs and certain signs. And um, I found them very, very helpful in that um, I feel there's part of me that understands them and they work well for me. I am not a tarot reader, I'm not a dowser, but I do read the runes and they have been very accurate for me. Where did you get your runes? Uh, the first set that I learned in England were the Saxon runes and I, I made my own set out of clay. Uh, I also trained with uh, PMH Atwater, Phyllis Atwater, the goddess runes, and we made runes in her workshop and I have a set of, that I made and uh, from natural stones that you, you draw on the, the symbols. And then I've also worked and also have the Ralph Blum sets. So I use them interchangeably. How interesting. Have you ever tied them into remote viewing or not really? Um, well, yes. When I'm um, Because it uses the same intuitive sense. It's a I think when you're reading the runes, it's a mix of psychokinesis, telepathy, uh, clairvoyance, a lot of the intuitive senses that come into play. And uh, it definitely fits in with remote viewing. You wrote a book called Diary of an Abduction in 2001. Right, correct? right. What yes. is that about? Um, sadly, it's out of print now, but um, it's a book about some experiences I'd had as a, a child and young woman that tied in, resonated with what a lot of people were talking about, the alien abduction phenomenon. So what I wanted to do was to try and answer some questions for myself and for other people. So it in, it's in diary format. And um, I interviewed a whole bunch of people. I put some of my own experiences in. I went to conferences, read books, watched documentaries, and uh, documented all of this process uh, to the point where it didn't really answer any questions. It just brought up more questions. Maybe you were trained with the rabbis. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> So you're answering questions with questions. It sounds like you've had rabbinic training. Maybe way back, another lifetime. <laughs> indeed, <maybe>. indeed. <laughs> so your personal journey looking at that whole realm of alien abductions, do you accept that they're real? Do you not accept that they're real? Do you not know? Where do you stand? I My feeling is that people are having real real experiences. What they are, I don't know. Um, it's it's very naive of us to say that we're here alone in this universe. I mean, it's a big universe. And uh, naive to say that we haven't been visited. It's naive to say that uh, we are it, and that we are the pinnacle, the ultimate of society, of the universe's effort at life. So it's quite possible that... Uh, we have been visited and we are still being visited. Does it worry you? No. No. I think it's amazing. Um, I think that if we were to know just how many races there were or how many, you know, how and why we're visited, I think we would be amazed. So with your shamanic work and also with what you just said, do you have a relationship with a creator per se? I do. Um, I was raised Christian. I was okay. raised in the Baptist tradition and um, left the church because it really didn't answer uh, questions that I had. Uh, queer is um, not that I, I'm anti-Christian. I still believe there's, there is a lot that we can learn, but I don't think the modern church uh, portrays what Christ originally um, intended. And uh, so I don't attend a particular church, but I still have a belief in a creator and uh, still feel that there is, you know, there's a whole spiritual realm that we have access to. That's great. Because usually by the time people know what you know and have been through what you've been through and are trained in what you're trained in, the multiple areas, mm -hmm. they don't always come to that place where they still accept that there is a creator, there's an intelligent creator. And once they are open to this alien realm, 
mm-hmm. and this other realm, it seems like their relationship to the sacred changes and it somehow gets muted down. I think that's because of fear. Um, when the the abduction researchers were first uh, interviewing people who'd had in- interactions, you know, the abduction interactions, these were very fearful people, people who had gone through some unknown and very scary experiences. And um, so there's been this mindset involved, which is that the the whole interaction, the abduction scenario is a very scary, fearful one. And I think in that respect, people who've been through that aspect of it with that mindset perhaps have turned their back on some of the more spiritual realms. I'm glad that you have the integration, and I think that you can help a lot of people, not only in that area, but in all the other areas you're trained in. Mm -hmm. How is your training as a nurse, which I find also interesting, that you're still qualified to do nursing if you want to do it, how is that helping you today, and how have you been called upon to utilize that in life? Well, I'm not actually certified here in the States. I was trained in England. I'm a state-registered nurse in England. And if I went back to England, it would it would be fairly easy to reestablish myself in the, the nursing profession. Uh, here in the States, it's been very helpful in that um, being a nurse, I've been able to manage my own health care and um, be aware of my own health rather than relying too much on the allopathic Uh, method, uh, mindset. And um, every position, for example, when I went to work with the seniors, having been a nurse was a big plus because I had an insight into the aging process and the problems that come along very often with advanced age. And uh, it's been very helpful all, all through my life. Have you ever remote viewed crop circles? Um. I haven't. I've actually been in a crop circle when I was visiting back in England, the large one that occurred on the top of Milk Hill with the multiple intersecting circles, um, the, it was almost like the fractals, um, and that was pretty amazing. Um, didn't have any major insights or effects on me except just awe. Uh, so I've not been tasked. Nobody has really tasked me. Uh, to look at the crop circles. And to be quite honest, there's no, there are 24 hours in the day. <laughs> you know, I can't go remote view everything. Indeed. What do you think they are, just personally? What do you think they actually are? Um, I have two viewpoints, two um, thoughts about them. One is a very practical one, that this is purely human Uh, technology that somehow there's, and I don't know how it's done, you know, that this is something beamed down some template onto the field that creates the patterns, perhaps from a satellite. Um, That's one thing I've thought about. The other is that the, if they are made by ETs, that they are not meant for us. They're meant for each other. It's like, okay, we visited, this is a symbol we put in this field. We visited here. We're going off to Alpha Centauri now. <laughs> you That's know? interesting. Kind of like the way an animal urinates to uh-huh. leave its mark. That's a good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't think they're, I mean, they're beautiful. I've seen a lot of rune symbols in, uh, there are a lot of symbolic stuff in the um, crop circles. But I don't think they're meant for us. That's interesting. I just know I was supposed to ask you that question. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Angela? Just that the uh, remote viewing field is still alive and progressing, despite the the skeptics and scientific viewpoint. Um, There actually is an association. The um, I'm sure Paul and Lynn have talked about this. The International Remote Viewing Association. It has a, a conference every year in Green Valley, Nevada, just outside Las Vegas, and um, with interesting speakers. You'll get to meet all the, you know, the, the highlighted people in remote viewing. And there are lots of people now out there in the remote viewing field teaching, doing practical applications, um, helping others with remote viewing. So it's still a very valid field. 
And give us your website address as well, please. It's www.remoteviewingnv, that's N, N V for Nevada, 